Hello everyone, this is Claudia from Bubblesmart.com and in this next video I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful get better card um, sometimes you need to send these ones because you know people are sick or something and you really want to lift their spirits up and I want you to try also a nice technique with making a starry night with watercolors so the first thing I'm, I'm doing is I, I taped my watercolor down to a board. I have a, just a plastic cutting board so that it doesn't warp. And I really weighed the paper. And this is Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I really, really weighed it. And as you can see, when I put the color in, the color really spreads around. Um, it just floats with the water. And you can make a starry night with any colors you want. Um, the previous one that I did, uh, um, I already sent it, so it's not the the one in the picture that I'm gonna make. Um, the previous one I did with more orange colors, and now I added some purple. And if you look at, at night skies, you have purples, you have greens, you have yellows, and all kind of other colors. So just choose your main colors and um, start building in. And I. After many trial and errors, I found that the best thing to do is to start with the colors that are more vibrant, like purples, yellows, and everything, and then um, going with your blue, and at the end start going with, with your darkest, like with your black. And after you finish with the black, you can add more blue to the mixture. And do not be afraid of this black because actually when I'm going to heat it up with my heat tool, it's going to lighten up a lot. So that's why I am not afraid to put a lot of black in because it's not really going to look that black in the end. And actually I'm going to have to do another layer on top of this after I heat set everything uh, just to give it more dimension. So I'm going in with black and a little bit of blue in the end. And this really gives it a more of a 3D look. And you're going to finish up this card by just doing the stars with white and, and flicking it up. So you don't have to worry that it's not really looking, looking really perfect because you're going to cover it a lot with white dots anyway. But the important thing of a starry night is that, that those splashes of color, the really vibrant violet or orange and all the other ones they need to show up and you can choose whether you do more of those vibrant colors like I did here or like in my previous card I only did a few spots uh, it's totally up to you how I do the splatters is I, I load my brush this is a beer brush and with water and this is a bit of gesso white gesso and then I tap it and the first time that I'm searching to tap the splatter is a bit bigger so I have bigger uh, splatter dots which are the bigger stars and then I'm going in with a really um, coarse uh, brush really short hairs and I'm flicking it on my finger and that gives me the really fine star starry look and I think that that's kind of it my suggestion so two things to remember wet your paper a lot put a lot of water and then start dropping the color and start from the vibrant color upwards and then just put the dark and the blue all around your vibrant colors and this is how you get the best look i mean i didn't even try to use salt or anything i think that's way too complicated and i think this look is enough for anything you you want to do with starry nights i mean you don't need more than this. Um, I'm going to cut that panel uh, with some long fond stitch dies. Uh, but before that, I'm going to prepare the elements um, of my um, card, like what's going to sit on the star night. And I'm using some paper spooky stamps. And this is kind of the only stamp set, stamp set I have that I am using a lot. I mean, I usually use a stamp set once or twice, but this time, this one I actually used a lot because it's one of my favorite. So I stamped with VersaFine only black ink, um, the rocket and the little astronaut guy. And then I'm, I'm using my ink and pencils. I have only the 12 box, so with 12 colors, but that's enough. 
mm, and no the way I do with ink tanks is I color in the parts that I, I want to have really dark and then I just spread the color around and trust me this color goes a long way I mean you don't have to put a lot of color down it really is spreading a lot and then you can go on the part where you think the shadow will be and add more and more color and this kind of will give the shading it's not really that difficult to do shading with intense pencils and I really like them because they're really vibrant and I needed something vibrant to stand out against uh, the background the background is very dark and it doesn't work if also like the astronaut or the rocket will be darker so I really needed something that can stand out on its own uh, the way the astronaut is actually a girl astronaut and yeah I know it's cliche and I make the girl pink but hey uh, I would like to be an astronaut dressed in pink if if I could be one so yay <laughs> um, I'm using ink times pencils and um, as you can see I'm only coloring parts I'm only adding color um not all around the image but only on parts of it and then i just spread the color around and where i want shading i just add more and um yeah this kind of it you can do also the other technique where you you touch your brush to the pencil itself and pick up color which works perfectly i spared you the intense labor of cutting the fussy cutting the images out now all I needed to have was a little um, picture frame, Polaroid frame. So because I don't have a Polaroid die, I'm going to make my own. So I cut like a rectangle and the rectangle I cut three inches by two and a quarter. And then I did one inch in from the bottom and then half an inch on top and half an inch on the sides and this is how, kind of how I make my Polaroid this kind of art dimensions and I'm going to post them on my blog post and the link of which is going to be in the description of this uh, video and uh, this Polaroid fits perfectly for the sentiment which it says get better at warp speed that I have also in this time set so now I'm just going to assemble my card and in order to assemble it I have to die cut the panel and I'm using a rectangle from the long phone stitch dies uh, because the background is so dark you don't really see the stitch lines in on camera but you see them in real life and they really look cool um, I use the gray card base and since it's watercolor and I didn't want to have dimension because I did post this one um, I decided to use Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere everything and this is kind of a permanent, really permanent glue and it's gonna hold the watercolor paper really good even if it's warped. So I'm adhering everything with this glue, I'm not using my uh, normal adhesive. And now I'm arranging uh, my rocket and my astronaut and I'm gonna also glue them together with this glue and the trick with this glue is you have to keep it a bit pressed until it catches on until it dries out a bit the the glue so just a few seconds if you keep them everything will be perfect I try to not put them all inside the frame but kind of coming out of the frame and I tucked in the the thread a bit behind the astronaut ear there and then I go around with the multi glue and I actually trace the path of the thread with the glue and then I'm going to put the glue on top of it and a trick that I didn't use here is first you have to let the glue dry out a bit and then put everything on top of it otherwise you make a mess and it, it will just stick to your fingers I didn't do that here because I forgot and I was hurrying up but you know if you want to try this uh, that's a little tip that I'm going to tell you I don't worry that the glue is a bit left out because it's going to dry clear and you're not going to be able to see it in the end I'm putting of course Wink of Stella every, everywhere um, 
and you would think that the card is ready but actually it's not because I had another piece that I cut with another long fond die and um, those little star um, star shapes die cut on down and that's going to go inside of my card and that's where people can write uh, the sentiment and I'm using uh, the little stars from the stamp set to just stamp around a bit like the telescope and you're gazing at the stars. <laughs> Another colleague of mine said that actually those uh, die cut stars, I should have uh, <laughs> I should have sent him the uh, some yellow stars so he can put inside uh, for each day that he gets better a yellow star so that that will look like progress but okay. Um, that was more of a, the fun part. Um, I'm, I actually had a little bit of glue on my tweezers there. That's why I could actually pick up those little stars. I'm, I'm actually waiting for my um, pick, pick up tool to come. But you know, when you're in a hurry, you can just add some glue to your tweezers, and then you can pick up anything with it. I have a box full with wood veneer stars and I never get the chance to use them and this time I thought I'm going to use a lot of them because I need to you know start using them so yeah I'm adhering them with again with the Tombow Mono Multi Glue there's a very good glue for wood veneer as well and yeah I hope you enjoyed this tutorial do give a try uh, on the sky it, you really get amazing results and every night sky that you do is going to look different because the colors are just going to fly off in different directions and yeah it's going to look different if you like this one uh, don't forget to um, tell me maybe in the comments or give me a thumbs up uh, if you want to know kind of what products i used um, go and visit my blog post there will be links and pictures of all the stuff that i use or almost all the ones that are important anyway